As for many people, 2020 was a bit of a strange year for me. But then again, the last couple of years have been a bit strange, and I guess that I'm pretty strange anyway. For the 20 years from 1998 to 2018, I lived the dream, running Spice, a big social and adventure group in the West Midlands. It was a crazy time and taught me a lot. I became Mr Fun to around 3,500 members at its height. Yes, it was fun, but it was also relentless, a really 24-7 lifestyle. I had around 120 events to put on and run every month, from sports to parties to holidays to behind-the-scenes visits to fundraisers. I'd have a regular 100-page newsletter to write, new members to recruit. Oh, and that constant feeling that I was being chased by a pack of dogs, baying, what's new, Richard? What's new? I had been warned by my predecessor that I would know when it was time to go, as I would start to resent it rather than love it. Actually, after 20 years, it was even more dramatic than that. The pressure of the long hours and so many people wanting a little bit of me caused me to have a mini breakdown, leaving me lying on the office floor at 2am unable to function properly. And I knew then it was time to sell up and let someone else have the fun. But what to do now? I suddenly went from being driven and stressed all the time to having no work life at all. In your mid-fifties, you're quite old to reinvent yourself and start again, yet too young to retire. Above all, it's an age when you start to realise that life expectancy is getting shorter and you need to make the best of every moment you have left. It's a time to concentrate on what you enjoy, what you're good at, and make it count. I've been part of Sutton Baptist Church since I became a Christian back in the 1980s. But whilst my faith had continued to be important to me and I could see God working in my life, my faith hadn't been getting much priority within the busy demands of my working life. I now had no excuses. I was able to offer my time and skills to God and say simply but dangerously, you know my skills, show me, use me. And you know what? He did. My time gradually started to fill again, as able to sign up to the church's D squared discipleship year. I be became a facilitator on the divorce recovery workshop, a volunteer in our food bank, a small group leader. Also, a couple of charities asked me to join their teams, including one in Sri Lanka that I went out to visit last year. It's such a privilege to have time to serve others and to be a channel of compassion and support at what may be the lowest point in people's lives. I learned that the ripples you make come back to you, that humans are hardwired to care and it is what truly makes us feel fulfilled. I confess I'm full of self-doubt, but God has been known to show me with great humour that he can use even me. I remember my first trip out on a Saturday evening with Sutton Pastors, a group who look after the drinkers and rough sleepers of our town centre after dark. I didn't want to be there, and I remember telling God so. What could I offer these people? I don't have the skills or knowledge or even relate to a nightclubbing scene. Later that night, I was approached at our table by a worried lady who presented fairly typically of the 1am drinking set, struggling to stay upright in white high heels and dressed more for the beach than for a cold November night. I need to tell you, she said, I've got ketones in my wee and I don't know why I'm telling you this. I do, I said. I'm a type 1 diabetic and I was on a course last week 
and I know all about ketones and the dangers of ketone acidosis. Sit down, let's talk. Afterwards, I had a real sense of God looking down at me and laughing lovingly, saying something like, and you said you had nothing to offer these people. Trust me. Coming into 2020, I also wanted to find some regular paid employment to supplement the bits of walk leading and tour leading work that I still do. The, the opportunity came up to train as a funeral celebrant and this has proved very rewarding. My training coincided with the Covid lockdown and my classes had to happen by Zoom, which was a new experience for me, but it worked. Covid has added other challenges to my first experiences of this work. It has been heartbreaking to work with families who haven't been able to be with their loved ones in their final days and then find they can't give them a normal send-off either. But it's a privilege to be able to shine light into that darkness. I've learnt to listen, to reach out, to support to celebrate each life, define its beauty and uniqueness and bring closure and peace to each situation. The food bank has stayed open throughout the pandemic and as many of you know it has been busier than ever. I have been struck in particular by how isolated some people have become. There are some people in these dark days who crave a friendly chat with another human as much as they do the food. Yes, there are other things I missed in 2020. Holidays and trips overseas, meals out, concerts and other family treats. And the physical contact we all took for granted, the reassuring hug or even that friendly smile that you realise you can't give to a stranger because you've got a mask on. But it was a great year to pause, to think and to appreciate. I think fondly of my walks with the family during lockdown, discovering wonderful countryside from our doorstep. It's been a chance to appreciate the gift of life and the wonder of the world we live in. To appreciate the simple things, to prioritise the important things, to prioritise people, community, caring for, for each other, love for humanity and the love of God. My prayer is that we hold on to the lessons of 2020 to make for a better 2021 and beyond. Thank you.